So let's talk about the different kinds of bristles that you'll find in your brushes. So first let's talk about natural. So natural hair in a brush, typically you're gonna wanna use for watercolor and oil paint. So this is a natural hair brush. This is squirrel, it's a watercolor brush. I would say primarily sables and squirrels you would only use for watercolor. So what's the difference between a natural hairbrush and a synthetic brush? So if I draw, let's pretend we're zooming in on a single hair in a brush. In a natural hair, it's gonna be porous. It's gonna have all these pores in it like this. And in a synthetic brush, it's gonna be much smoother. It's not gonna have those pores. A synthetic, can come in two different forms. It can be the kind that's super smooth like this, or it can be a synthetic that simulates a natural brush. So it can get very confusing when you go to buy your brushes. So why are there all these different kinds of bristles and hairs in your brushes? So like I said, for a natural brush, a squirrel or a sable, they want to hold a lot of water because you're working with watercolor paint. So you want to load that brush up and you want to be able to paint a long time and make a big wash with that watercolor brush. So you want those pores to hold water. It's just like your own hair. You know, you get your hair wet and you wring it out and all that water comes out. However, with acrylic paint, you don't want these pores because in acrylic paint, if you don't know this already, I guess you're gonna find out right now, acrylic paint is a polymer, which means it's a plastic. So acrylic paint doesn't so much dry as cure. So if you have one of these beautiful sable or squirrel or badger brushes and acrylic paint gets in these pores, it's gonna clog those pores up and then this brush isn't gonna hold all that water anymore and it's gonna be useless and it's gonna splay out and look terrible and you're gonna be very sad because you'll have spent a lot of money on this brush because these are very expensive. So a typical acrylic brush, you'll know it's synthetic if it has these white bristles. And if you get one of these, these are great. They also come like this with these brown bristles, which I guess, you know, just look a little bit more like natural hair so people find them appealing. Doesn't matter, the white or the, the tinted bristles are gonna be Okay, with the white ones, and when I teach this happens all the time, this is a synthetic brush, it'll stain. So the first time you use it and then you wash it, it's gonna stain and students are like, it's ruined, it's ruined, and it's not ruined. Uh, it's just, the white bristle holds the color and most acrylic paint, especially if this looks like it was Viridian Green, is really high staining. So, you know, as long as the brush is clean and it's still got nice movement like this, you're in good shape. Okay, so, Hog, squirrel, badger. Badger's harder to get these days. I don't know why. I have a really nice badger, but it's in my office at school, so I don't have it here to show you. Uh, but it's really nice for blending in oil. So where you might use a natural brush like one of these for an oil painting is to blend or to do like fine detail work. But for the most part in the oil paint, you're gonna have brushes that look like this. So this is a filbert. This is a natural hairbrush, and this is hog. So hog is a little bit stiffer. See, but this is a really nice quality hog brush. Um, it's soft, right? But it's also pretty firm. So oil paint's really heavy. It's got a heavy, more viscous body to it. Uh, and the brushes have to take a little more abuse. So these hog bristles are really durable. So these, these are wonderful for beginning oil painters. You can use one of these with oil paint, these uh, synthetic brushes for acrylic, but I find that they're a little too slippery for oil paint. They don't hold as much um, of the paint and the paint kind of slides around a little too much. So for oil paint, I really dig these um, bristle brushes and the brand I really like for that is a Skoda. A Skoda makes, it's a Spanish brush and it's beautiful. Their hog bristles are soft, durable, and they're very affordable. I'll put that in the notes. Uh, the synthetic brushes can get confusing. So you're gonna to wanna to use synthetics for acrylic, definitely. You can also use them for watercolor, oil, or gouache. And you just wanna make sure when you're buying your brush that you look at 
the name on the side, because most of the time when they're selling the brush, they'll tell you what you can use it for, right? So a synthetic brush, like this is an angled flat. I guess there's no information on this one anymore. Um, but the ones that you'll see for watercolor, they'll typically be one of these and they'll be labeled as like a sablette. So if you see the word sable and it's got one of these little cute um, suffixes on it, sablette, that's a synthetic. Pearls tend to be synthetic. Pearls are usually these white bristle brushes, silvers, different brands to use different names to designate their synthetics, but it, it should say when you buy it, if it's a synthetic or not. And there's nothing wrong with synthetic brushes. I actually use a lot of Sablette because I'm really rough on my brushes. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm like, you know, when you're a kid and you're really hard on shoes and your mom complains, I'm like that with brushes. I go through brushes very quickly. I use them up. Um, I like to scrub. I like to you know, do things with the brushes that, that really cause them to eventually degrade. So, you know, however you paint is how you paint. There are definitely ways to paint with your brushes so you don't destroy them. But if you have one of these nice sables, you're going to want to take care of that. So when I have a really nice one, like this is a really expensive brush, I've taken care of this one, but you can see I've left it in the water a little bit too often. So basically when you're buying your brushes, get something that's in your price range and appropriate to the painting that you're making. The one thing you don't want to do is use a brush for oil and acrylic or watercolor and acrylic. Get brushes that are designated for oil paint and brushes that are designated for acrylic paint and brushes that are designated for your water media like wash and watercolor. Because if you don't, what happens is uh, the oil paint will, will start to, you know, the brushes get oily, they get slick. So even when you wash them, they still have a different feel to them and your natural brushes will get ruined if you use them with acrylic paint. So I like to keep my brushes separate for all of my different jobs, right? So I have a set for my watercolor, I have a set for my oil paint. And these are oil painting brushes, by the way, I'll just show you. These are kind of multi-purpose and you'll see brushes are sold multi-purpose. Like these were actually sold as you can use these for oil and acrylic. And that's absolutely true. But once you use it for oil, you kind of want to keep it with the oil. So when you buy it, it can go either way. But I just think it's as a teacher, you don't want to get these brushes confused because acrylic paint basically can really ruin a brush. <laughs> and I'll show you one. So this is a brush that was used for acrylic and left out a little too long and it dried. And you can see like a, a healthy flat, this is a healthy flat. See how I can bend it like that? This one, it's hard. See that, all that paint there, that's all dried up paint. It doesn't mean I can't use this brush, but it's not gonna do what it's supposed to do. This is dried up acrylic paint. So acrylic paint will dry up in that brush really easily. And if you're not paying attention, you leave your brush sitting out, you're gonna dry out your brush. So Oil paint doesn't dry. So you'll, you'll get into these habits with the different kinds of paint you're gonna use. I mean, oil paint dries, but it doesn't dry right away. So if you're painting in oil, you can have a loaded brush and you can have it set on your palette, it's gonna be fine. But with acrylic, that's not the case. So just develop a good habit and keep your brushes uh, separated into their different media so that they last longer and that you spend less money.